it's been a while. I know. I know. <laughs> August was a write-off for me, guys. Uh, this is a raw vlog for all of you guys who care. Um, this is my fangirl raw vlog because I made a few videos for Star Trek Attack Wing last month um, where I made it a point to try to cut out the fangirling and cut out the, the extraneous stuff because I have a tendency to ramble on and talk about stuff I love about the universe so much. Um, and I got a lot of comments saying, hey, Terry, don't, don't stop fangirling. So I thought I would today, first of all, say thank you, A, to everyone who's subscribed to me. I hit 5,000 subscribers over the month of August. Whoa, huge, huge deal. B, uh, thank you guys for supporting me for so long. Um, last August was my, like, one month anniversary with Geek and Sundry, which is, like, a big, a big deal for me anyways um so like that one year anniversary with geek and sundry and there is some crazy stuff that happened with them too including like the bridge of legendary all very kind of um fortunate that just came together which is crazy so i got to do that and then i got to go to gen con last month as well which was a first for me and and also happened to be uh the chance for me to meet Will as a Geek and Sundry vlogger. And I don't know if y'all know this, I happen to have a little bit of a, a thing for Star Trek. I'm a bit of a, bit of a fangirl. Um, and uh, meeting Will in that context was really crazy interesting. I say in that context because it wasn't the first time I actually got to meet Will. It was it's very different. Um, so I thought today I would share the story of the first time I met Will Wheaton. And I thought it would be a fun story because it's like a story of my ultimate fangirling. And I think that's it's kind of humorous. It's really embarrassing um, on my end. But I think it's also an interesting kind of segue into my experience at Gen Con with him because it really did deeply inform what that was when it actually happened. So I met Will for the first time like three years ago um, at the Calgary Comic Expo and this is I think like the timing of it was really interesting I think it was like a couple of years after he'd been on the guild um, he hadn't like really done tabletop yet I think it was just coming out or it was in this first season it wasn't like the big deal and he was out promoting it and doing a lot of work to to get it out there and so I had waited in line in the convention just you know to do the signing that that whole normal fan kind of thing. Um, and for me, I had been a huge Will Wheaton fan for like a while. I I followed his blog for a long time. I would read his, I would read his, uh, his blogs and then I would listen to his podcast. I supported his podcast. I bought him burritos on his uh, podcast Radio Fruit Burrito. I would listen to his keynotes um, from PAX and stuff after they'd happened. I, I'd followed him for years before that. I even followed him, um, I read his books and actually went up and like I bought digital copies of all of them. And then for one year for my birthday, um, my husband bought me a hard copy um, of Memories of the Future, and Memories of the Future, which is like his, I don't know, it's like a book that's reflective on the first season of, first half of the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, as well as like, um, kind of a bit of a criticism in terms of like from a, a, a media critic uh, criticizing the episodes and how bad they were, and they were pretty bad, so you got some fun anecdotes about like the the episode and filming that, that particular storyline, but also like like, a real taste for how crazy and ridiculous some of the storylines were and just really pointing out how terrible it was. And, and, you know, I feel like, not to go too off topic, but I feel like that kind of sensibility was a lot of what informed um, the Will Wheaton project on sci-fi. You know, that, that idea of loving something but still being able to point out what's wrong with it. Um, was kind of the, the, the premise of Memories of the Future, and it kind of was the thing that I saw a lot of on the Will Wheaton Project. So, that aside, I I treasured that copy of that book, and it was something my husband bought for me from the site, and I brought it. That was the thing that I brought 
um, for Will to sign when I was in line that year um, for, for, you know, just to meet him and, and get it signed. So I was the last person in that line. I, like, just made it before they cut it off to say, okay, Will has to go soon to his next thing, like, photo op or whatever. And I just, I was really cognizant of the fact that he had to be somewhere else by the time he got to me and the line he already was probably holding up other people and I was messing up their experience so I have this weird guilt about that sort of thing so I I was already aware of that so I tried to keep my conversation and engagement very brief but so in my mind I was preparing for that and just like you know I'm not gonna have a lot of time with him I'm just gonna say thank you and I'm gonna gonna say how much I appreciate his work and then I'm just gonna you know take my copy book and just leave so he doesn't feel like weird about being held up and and that sort of thing. I won't monopolize his time was kind of the, the the big approach that I took to it. And I'll, I got to the table and all of a sudden in that moment, that was the moment where my complete admiration for this person just hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, because I grew up watching him, I grew up having a crush on him. And then after that, I like, I, I watched and admired all of his work and appreciated all of his work and uh, I give him the book to sign and he says, I recognize this book. This is one of mine. And he said something about the paper and that's when I was just like, oh. and all I could do was this, like total mute. My, my panic fight or flight kind of, uh, systems hit and I was just ready to just take off. Like I was waiting for the sign the book and then just run. Um, I think I had hyped myself up to like try not to, to take up too much time and and that's kind of what happened. So that that's essentially what happened when I met Will Wheaton for the first time uh, a few years ago. And that that thing kind of informed how I chose to try to interact with him when I was at the luncheon um, where we went for the the you know, tabletop season three Kickstarter supporters. There was like a, a special luncheon for them if you pledged a certain tier. And so we were there and I was just helping set up and I was, you know, mingling with the fans and it was really cool. And just hanging out, like kind of being an, another tabletop fan was really fun. Um, just talking games and, and, and geekery, I guess, a sort of geekery. But I had made it a very specific point not to like, speak to Will, not to approach Will, like, do not talk to him unless you are spoken to first, like, just so that I don't have, like, that same kind of reaction. I had, I had, like, I had tried to prepare myself as best as I could so that I didn't, like, fangirl out. Um, because, you know, there, there hopefully may be another opportunity to actually, like, just, just hang. Um, but, you know, we were there for other people, and so I tried to be as mindful of his time and as respectful of the time of the people who who had supported Tabletop and got to meet them, um, got to meet Will for that purpose. Um, so I, I tried as best as I could. I don't know. Um, there were moments where I kind of... He, ta he was talking to me about 40K, and I just couldn't help myself. I kind of gushed a little, a little too much. Um, and... And I think that that there was a moment there where I really appreciated the wargaming community. And I think one of the things that you have when you, you touch models um, and you play these games, it doesn't matter what models and it doesn't matter what games, you automatically have a specific shared experience. You have a common vernacular. Um, and, and that can give you a lot of common ground to talk about um, because the, the wargaming community is a niche of a niche and it's really interesting to share those stories so I may not play games like War Machine but I can still have a conversation about mechanics and cool interesting tidbits about universes and and what we like and dislike about specific kind of models and and have that whole conversation and have common ground for it, even though we don't don't necessarily share the game, we share the experience. And and I had moments like that with Will, like walking around 
you know, going from venue to venue and stuff. And that was really cool. And I, I don't think um, I would have been prepared for that if I hadn't had a total fangirl moment many years before. So that is my fangirl story. Uh, thanks for listening. It's, it's kind of a long, longer video, but uh, I thought I would kind of share something with you that I, I, you know, it's kind of embarrassing, but, but is something that uh, is a bit of a celebration for me and, and as a thank you for, for like supporting me. So thank you guys so very much. Let me know in the comments if you've had like any weird experiences with, with, you know, celebrity, I guess, and, uh, and what you did. I, or maybe you could just make me feel better and make one up. I don't know. Go ahead and comment and let me know. Um, like, share, subscribe, obviously. If you aren't already, those things help me out immensely. And uh, I'm going to try to make another one of these in the next few days. Um, make a few more. Because uh, raw vlogging is a thing that I, I, I've kind of realized I really like doing. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Until next time, I'll see you soon.